I think Sunak's real desire is to put Brexit behind the Conservative Party uh, and behind the country, indeed, and to go back to uh, the sort of politics that prevailed before Brexit became the dominant issue. That is really the, the heart of his approach, I think. he It's a nostalgic approach, which is why Cameron is part of the picture. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. This video is being recorded on the 13th of November, a day on which two important developments in British politics came to fruition. The first was that Suella Braverman was sacked from her position as Home Secretary by the Prime Minister, and the second was that um, David Cameron was appointed as Foreign Secretary. To discuss these um, these events and what implications they may have for the future of British politics, I'm joined today by John Stevens, the uh, chair of the Federal Trust. John, thank you for joining us. Uh, why do you think that um, Suela Braverman has been sacked today by, by Rishi Sunak? I think she had become a liability for those Conservatives, particularly in the Parliamentary Party, who are fearful for the impact that her very hard line uh, on identity politics was having in those uh, broadly remaining client seats in the southeast of England um, that are part of the blue wall and who fear that a challenge perhaps from the Liberal Democrats um, would be uh, more successful there because of her presence. People used to say that uh, the reason why she remained in Sunak's cabinet was that he, he felt a personal obligation to her because she supported him quite early on in his leadership campaign. It always seemed to me there was a bit more to it than that, uh, that she did provide a, a link for him with um, what is a, a certain important strand in present conservative thinking, as you say, particularly in the party, but also to some extent in in in, in Parliament, um, which uh, actually revels in these identity politics, which regards that a, as an important way in which the Conservative Party can differentiate itself from the Labour Party. Um, has Sunak turned his uh, back on that uh, analysis entirely, do you think? Well, I think he felt that the priority now is to shore up the traditional Conservative vote. Uh, and have a campaign that is dominated by economic questions uh, and issues of uh, political uh, competence over the economy rather than the identity politics that has come into being because of Brexit. I think Sunak's real desire is to put Brexit behind the Conservative Party uh, and behind the country, indeed, and to go back to uh, the sort of politics that prevailed before Brexit became the dominant issue. And that is really the, the heart of his approach, I think. he It's a nostalgic approach, which is why Cameron is part of the picture. Um, the, the idea that uh, he can only secure the survival of the Conservative Party in its former incarnation before the European issue became absolutely dominant, uh, if he can go back to those old politics, that you have a Conservative Party that is competent on the economy and uh, looks after those who are aspiring and that the Labour Party offers uh, a, 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 an alternative that is more socially aware and more socially concerned. And those are the old politics that he, he looks for. And but he is not trying to revive people. Thatcherism, I think, in that sense, of, of the, the old form of a progressive conservatism um, that is not tainted by the politics that Brexit brought into being. The problem is that the politics that Brexit brought into being has transformed everything. It has transformed the, the whole nature of the political discourse in Britain. And uh, that is really what he is fighting against in order to secure the survival of the Conservative Party. But he, he's a rather unlikely um, nostalgic politician, isn't he? Uh, his views are very much uh, 
a globalist, managerialist. Um, I don't give the, have the impression that he's someone who's suffused by a warm glow of nostalgia for the Britain of the 1950s or 1960s. Um, on the contrary, it's a, it's a rather more bracing, rather less traditional conservative that he, conservatism that he espouses. Now he's a Thatcherite uh, in the sense that he, he wanted uh, a Britain that was economically efficient, um, that was... Um, uh, part of globalization, though not taking it too far, but was socially conservative at the same time. The mix that had been behind conservative success ever since uh, the, the 1980s, and um, and which had, had dragged the Labour Party onto its territory, in essence. The problem is that Brexit has altered all of that. It has transformed the economic picture, and it is part of a of, a, of an economic picture that is now extremely hostile to that former version of conservatism, not least because globalization itself is in retreat and has become a, uh, a malign force in uh, supporting the conservative agenda. Um, and But it is also introduced into British politics questions of identity, questions of nationalism, of a, uh, of a rather narrow kind, uh, and that has completely altered the picture. But Sunak, like many leavers, hopes that the Brexit debate can be put to bed, can be uh, got over, we move on. And that he sees as the, as the best chance of preserving the Conservative Party in its old form, really, in its pre-Brexit form. And there is also this nostalgia, I think, on the, on, uh, in the Labour Party, too, in a way, curiously. There is this hope of, of pretending that Brexit hasn't really happened and isn't a dominant element in our politics, hasn't totally transformed the board. Um, but, of course, it has. Sunak uh, used to uh, pay at least lip service to the idea of preserving the Red Wall. Uh, if his concentration now is on the blue wall, isn't that a recognition that uh, the Conservative Party is very unlikely to win the next general election? Uh, mm -hmm. The red wall was the uh, element in the electoral coalition that supposedly was going to get the Conservatives back, back into power. Once you've given up on them, once you're concentrating on the blue wall, it's a much reduced Conservative Party that he's looking at after the next election, isn't it? Oh, yes, I think Sunak's task uh, is now to preserve the Conservative Party as a coherent body, uh, because that is what is now on the line. And there be a conflict about what that coherent body will be after they lose the next election. Well, it's it going back to what it was, which is a party of the blue wall, a party of um, the economically uh, more prosperous Um interested in economic performance and in their personal economic welfare and not so concerned about the inequalities in society and the and the and the issues of of uh, leveling up i mean the and that 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 is the old politics um and the labor party is also part of this process but yeah. brexit exploded all of that i mean the reason why the conservative party won its huge victory in 2019 was that it rode successfully uh, this transformation that brexit had brought about it was able to appeal to the red wall seats on an entirely new notion of uh, a nationalist approach really that offered something for everyone it offered um, leveling up, and it offered economic prospects of a new, dynamic, liberated uh, Britain. Um, and that was the, the the coalition that Johnson put together to secure Brexit. But of course, it was an enormous lie, mm. and uh, it totally um, as, uh, depended on uh, inconsistent notions of what the Brexit revolution had really achieved. Um, has said that, to try and pretend that the Brexit revolution uh, didn't really happen. Braverman has said rather ominously for, Camp, for um, Sunak that she will comment further on her dismissal in due course. Uh, will she be able to mount a, 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 a sort of frond against um, uh, Sunak? Will, will he have um, 
things all his own way in the next year, if indeed, if indeed he he attempts um, the sort of reconstruction that you're you're thinking might be in his mind? Well, I think she has got what she wanted, which was to be fired, uh, in the hope that she would then be able to be part of uh, those Conservatives who recognise that Brexit has changed everything and believe that the Conservative Party should be uh, a party of identity politics and of nationalism uh, and should be uh, jettisoning quite a lot of the former Conservative economic agenda in favour of a much more interventionist state, a more protectionist economy. Um, th that was the uh, the logic of, of of many people who supported Brexit. And that, that is what the debate is, 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 is now going to be in the Conservative Party. And what Sunak's concern is, and I think he's right about this, is that that body of thinking, that uh, nationalist um, identity politics wing of the Conservative Party, um, will, in the event of Sunak being defeated badly at the next general election, uh, will completely take over the Conservative Party. And that will be the end of traditional conservatism in this country. It will be an entirely new sort of right-wing politics. But what is he doing that um, will give his wing, if there is such a thing of the Conservative Party, a, a better chance after the general election? Is it simply limiting the um, the losses that the Conservative Party so, uh, it's, will inevitably suffer? It's, it's limiting the losses by um, basically trying to shore up uh, the blue wall um, in the southeast of England, in particular, and Cameron is uh, is is very much part of this. He is he, that is his constituency essentially, and whether he he still speaks to it is, is that's a very much a different question. But um, the the idea of a of a a, a gentler sort of conservative conservatism, one that focuses on environmental issues as well as um, economic ones, but which is basically playing the uh, traditional conservative economic game. That's what they're, they're hoping to be able to put forward at the next general election, so that the loss, which they expect correctly, in my view, um, will not be so crushing that uh, that entire tradition in the Conservative Party is effectively destroyed and replaced by something very different which is what Braverman is is interested in. But uh, she, I don't think, is remotely the most significant figure uh, in the constellation that is likely to assemble uh, around a new sort of right-wing politics, which won't be conservative anymore. But isn't there, there right a, da a danger that you're attributing too much coherence um, to Sunak's uh, activities to his, his his political choices uh, a month ago he was telling the conservative party about his how his party his future conservative party was going to be the party of change and now he brings back um, david cameron um, uh, who will be uh, a red rag to the bull of the extreme right of the pro of the Euro, most eurosceptic right they regard him bizarrely um, as a passionate remainer um, is he really going to be able to put the um the uh, the Brexit issue to bed when he has Cameron, who is is so provocative um, for the most uh, radical Eurosceptics in his own party. No, I don't think he is remotely. And of course, there is a very high level of confusion and incoherence in this whole approach, as you've set out. But of course, that simply reflects the enormously high level of incoherence and um, uh, within the, the the Brexit coalition um, that uh, gave the Conservatives their victory in twenty nineteen. Uh, the crucial question is, will this sort of politics, which he, he's obviously set the, the, the tactics that he wishes to adopt for the next general election, this defensive approach, um, will it be sufficient to save the Conservatives from what the opinion polls currently suggest will be an absolutely crushing defeat? Because if it is a crushing defeat, it will be a crushing defeat for that attempt to revive uh, traditional conservatism. I think that attempt is doomed anyway in the longer run because it it is predicated on the notion that Brexit was just a sort of blip in our politics and didn't represent a very, very profound sejour. Um, and I think it's a desire for the old politics, which Brexit doesn't affect, 
That's what is driving Sunak. But I don't think it will be sufficient to prevent a defeat so crushing that it will hand the future of conservatism into very different uh, radical right hands. There's a question, of course, uh, uh, of uh, whether the Conservative Party can be protected from radical right hands in any event, even if Sunak does do a little better in, in limiting the losses by, by not doing too badly in, in the blue wall. Um, if there's a, a crushing defeat, which I think is overwhelmingly likely, um, there will be many voices within the Conservative Party, particularly within the party, which has the, the party membership, which has the right to elect the next leader, um, saying we weren't radical enough. Um, and I can't see how... Uh, I think that is absolutely right. I but... can't see how Sunak will do so well um, as to be able to, to rescue the Conservative Party from the fate worse than death that you describe. No, I agree. I, I don't think he can. I think this is just a desperate rearguard rear action. Um, but it is probably the best chance he's got. Uh, I think that is true. Um, but no, I, I believe that Brexit has transformed our politics mm. and it, it has destroyed traditional conservatism and will bring forth a very different and, in my view, much more sinister and dangerous type of right wing politics. But of course, um, this nostalgia also affects the Labour Party, which is hoping that Brexit hasn't changed everything. Um, and I think that is going to be uh, the the accompanying question to this debate, which is um, if by pretending that Brexit hasn't changed everything, Sunak will bring down the Conservative Party. But if is Starmer pretending that Brexit hasn't changed everything for the Labour Party as well? That is the more difficult question. How do you how do you anticipate that working out over the four or five years of, of presumably the next Labour government? Well, I think um, the problems are that uh, Starmer is trying to uh, win the election essentially on a Blairite agenda, um, as uh, uh, Sunak is reviving a uh, what he would see as a sort of Thatcherite approach, um, John Major approach, um, and that that Blairite agenda has also been destroyed by the revolution that is Brexit, the advent of identity politics in an economic environment that is much harsher and which the reality, the economic realities of Brexit have made far more difficult to handle and to address. Um, and so I see a radicalization in our politics uh, on both sides. I think we're going to see a new sort of right wing politics, uh, which will be emphasizing identity, immigration, um, national sovereignty of a certain kind. Exactly. Um, but of course, that could be fairly swiftly answered by a more uh, radical left wing agenda, uh, recognizing that the economic difficulties are such that only very significant increases in taxation, for example, uh, can um, meet the challenges that the country faces, and in particular, satisfy the, the underlying agenda of traditional uh, left-wing politics, which is to address what are now very serious social deficiencies up and down the country. We have heard in the COVID inquiry last week um, the criticisms, uh, the well-known criticisms of uh, some among Boris Johnson's advisers um, that he would trolley off unpredictably in one direction or another changing from one day to another. Um, I think um, Sunak is lucky not to escape similar criticism, uh, because I'm not at all sure that even if what you say is a, a correct analysis of his thinking at the moment, um, that he won't change his mind in, in a month's time, because I, I think he is caught um, in the vice in the vice like grip um, uh, of two existential constraints upon the Conservative Party, one in which comes from the danger of losing the blue wall, and the other which comes from the danger of losing the red wall. And he must oscillate hopelessly between the two, in, in my view, because I, I'm not sure he has an underlying political project to, to which he can refer himself. Um, do you think I'm being unduly harsh on him? No, not at all. But I think uh, the, the question really is, 
will those who recognize that Brexit has changed everything and want a new right wing politics based on identity, essentially, um, d will they wish to strike before the next election? Or will they wait for uh, the massive defeat, which, which um, most people expect? And of course, the people who aren't content to wait for the next election are those who are going to lose their seats in it, uh, particularly in the Red Wall. And so there is a question, I suppose, that he will come under uh, pressure. There may even be attempts to get rid of him um, ahead of the general election. Um, I don't rule that out, although I think that uh, the inertia uh, and the restraints that are imposed in the run-up to election will be such that that he will probably be able to contain that. But it, it can't be entirely dismissed as a prospect. Uh, that is true. Um, and I, I basically think that his strategy is going to fail and fail very badly. I, I can't see anything at the moment which is really going to stop a total transformation of conservatism into something that is radically right, essentially, and not uh, the, the the sort of conservatism that we were used to before the Brexit referendum. Well, perhaps um, Cameron will be rejoining a sinking ship, and, and that will be not the least of the historic ironies um, in his career. Um, I thought at one stage that uh, perhaps in bringing him on board, uh, Rishi Sunak was playing with the idea of having a, a rejoin referendum, and he wanted advice from David Cameron because his experience is unparalleled in, in this field. Um, but that was just a, a fantasy. Um, thank you very much indeed, John. We'll watch out for, for developments. And uh, uh, final question, does this make an earlier general election more likely or less likely? I think marginally more likely, but only very marginally, because as I say, the, the crucial dynamic are those who fear they will lose their seats. And there is always the argument for going the longer distance in, in that context. Yeah. Well, all, all politicians think that it, it would be an outrage if they were voted out. So something must come along to to to, to rescue them. But yeah. um, Sunak will, will carry on believing that throughout next year. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we'll watch um, the developments with, with great interest. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this um, Federal Trust discussion of British politics. Um, we have a number of similar discussions on our website already, um, which we I hope you will find similarly interesting. Thank you very much and goodbye.